JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 1st. I am Haralamos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD. Now we'll talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be consider considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar was found lower against all the other major currencies during the early European morning uh, Tuesday, despite opening the week slightly higher. The main gainers were Aussie, Kiwi and CAD, while the currencies against which uh, the greenback lost uh, the least ground were uh, GBP, JPY and uh, the Euro. Now, oh, the weakening of the US dollar and the strengthening of the risk linked currencies, OZI, Kiwi, and Luni suggests that market sentiment improved again at some point yesterday or today in Asia. Turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that uh, major European indices slid again due to the Russia Ukraine crisis intensifying over the weekend, with, with uh, Wall Street following suit. The exception was, uh, was Nasdaq uh, gaining 0.41% helped by Tesla and Rivian Automotive which jumped 7.5 and 6.5% respectively. Appetite improved during the Asian session today with all indices under our radar trading uh, in, uh, in positive territory. Now as we already noted Russia intensified its attacks in Ukraine over the weekend, with the West announcing more and stricter sanctions, including blocking some Russian banks from the SWIFT international payments, payment system. Russian President Putin re responded by putting nuclear armed forces on high alert. Due to that, financial markets uh, opened in a risk-averse uh, mode yesterday, but the selling paused for a uh, breath uh, during the Asian session today. Although high-level talks between the two nations ended up um, with, uh, with no common ground yesterday, the willingness of both sides to continue negotiating may have been seen as a sign of no immediate escalation of sanctions. As uh, for our view, it remains the same as yesterday and last week. It is too early to say that the worst is behind us, that stricter sanctions will not be imposed, and that uh, no other nation will be militarily involved. Therefore, we stick to our guns that even if the current relief bounce continues for a while more, there is a decent chance uh, for stock markets to experience another round of selling. In other words, we still see the risks as tilted uh, to the downside. Now, with regards to the FX market, the ultimate loser is the Russian ruble which plunged as much as 30% uh, after the West imposed new sanctions, uh, new sanctions against Russia, with dollar rupee hitting a record of 120 before clawing back some losses to 101 after the Russian central bank hiked interest rates from 9.5% to 20%. This was an emergency move to support the currency as uh, due, to the due to the latest sanctions, the bank is not able to intervene by selling foreign currencies. Among the majors, the ones that have been uh, suffering the most appear to be the euro and the pound, while the traditional uh, risk linked Aussie, Kiwi and Luni have not been hurt that much. The main reason could be that the crisis is driving energy and other commodity prices up due to, due to due to supply disruption concerns and as commodity linked assets as well these currencies uh, stayed relatively supported now speaking about the aussie overnight besides headlines surrounding uh, russia and ukraine we also had an rba monetary policy decision the bank the bank kept all its policy tools untouched as was widely expected while in the accompanying statement 
officials maintain their commitment to keep supportive uh, monetary policy conditions, uh, repeating that they will not increase rates until actual inflation is sustainably within the 2 to 3 percent uh, target range. They also added that the war in Ukraine is a major source of uncertainty, leaving no room for participants to accelerate their tightening expectations. And yet, the Aussie continued climbing higher. As we already mentioned, the only reasonable explanation may be that it draws support from the rising energy and commodity prices. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, during the European session, Germany's prelimi preliminary inflation data for uh, February are coming out, with both the CPI and HICP rates expected to have drifted further north. Specifically, the CPI rate is forecast to inch up to 5.1% year-over-year from 4.9% while the HICP one to have risen to 5.4% year over year from 5.1%. From Canada, we have the GDP numbers uh, for the fourth quarter in December. The annualized uh, quarter over quarter rate is expected to have risen to 6.2 from 5.4%, but the monthly one for December to have slid to 0.1% from 0.6%. At its latest gathering, the Bank of Canada decided to keep interest rates untouched at 0.25% at a time when the financial community was expecting a hike. In the statement accompanying the decision, it was noted that the Council expects rates to increase and that the overall economic slag is now absorbed, which means that they are more likely to hit uh, the hike button um, at, uh, at, at tomorrow's gathering. Therefore. With that in mind, and also taking into account that uh, the upside surprise, and also and also taking into account the upside surprise in the CPI numbers for January, we doubt that the slowdown in economic activity for the month of December will be enough to prevent officials from pushing the hike button uh, tomorrow. After all, for the quarter as a whole, the economy is forecast to have improved. Now elsewhere, we have the final market manufacturing PMIs for February from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, and as it is usually the case, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. From, uh, from the US, we also get the ISM manufacturing index uh, for the same month, which is forecast to have risen fractionally to 58 from 57.6. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and uh, listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.